Good morning, everyone. By now, you would have already read my instruction for the final exam due next week uh, on the email. That's why uh, you were able to got redirected to this site, this YouTube link that uh, will tell you the brief discussion about uh, the remainder of Chapter 8. Again, I just would like to reiterate that the final exam schedule for our customer skills class would be um, next week, Thursday, 11 to 1, 11 in the morning to 1 p.m. And I'm going to reiterate that at the end of this video. Again, um, welcome and let's get right into it. So this material that I am using is of course material from Course Technology. This is not my own work and I'm basically discussing the actual content of our primary textbook. Just a recapitulation, Chapter 8 is all about making a project to determine uh, what is the user needs and this is implemented through a series of nine different sequential steps to be made. The chapter is actually subdivided into two parts, the first part being a discussion, a detailed discussion of all these nine sequential steps and the last part being the tools or the tools of trade being used by administrators and analysts in order to implement the said project based on the user needs requirement. Uh, we are going to focus more on the MS project uh, system or application instead of the other, you know, clerical tools that is used by analysts as I know you have gone through some of them already in prior courses. Uh, just to again like I said have a review of this one the main purpose of the user needs analysis is to basically determine which computer products or services that best needs uh, that's, that best meet the user end requirements and basically this is uh, this could be a strategy in terms of identifying what is the work situation both um, political, situational, or social. Um, the actual implementation technique could be either formal or informal. Um, the actual solution that could be the aftermath of the user requirements analysis could be you know, implementing or installing a, a computer system or um, adding a, a peripheral to an existing current infrastructure. This peripheral could be a fax service or an additional uh, application server, it could be a data server, it could be a job scheduler. For networking analysis, it could be a, an additional load balancing software or server. Or it could be a basic office network installation since the, the user uh, still don't have the uh, network infrastructure advantages implemented in their system. Or it could just very well be services. It could be a training program that is being conducted for, let's say, an upgrade to an existing application or products that are being used in the company right away. Or it could be an implementation of an ISP uh, or a media backup service, just like the jukebox system using optical disk requirements. Uh, the actual project, so to speak, can be summed up into three phases, the preparation phase, the investigation phase, and the decision phase. The preparation phase, the aftermath of this is to get a firm grip on whether there really is a problem and there's really a big requirement for such product or service. And that as, a, as the project manager trying to interpret the user requirement, that both you and the user have a firm lock on what really is a problem and if there really is a problem in the first place. Also in this phase you have to have more or less the 50,000 feet overview of whether uh, the problem is something that can be quantified and if so a solution can be presented and whether the solution actually is visible um, on, on a general perspective. Investigation phase, basically this is where you try to determine the actual problem in terms of what are the specific steps uh, that is present in the current process and where the problem really lies. Uh, in so doing, you would be able to identify the different alternative solutions that you can come up with. If we're talking about implementing a new system, you're talking about uh, probably computerizing the current uh, financial application systems that they have. Uh, it could be 
probably adding extra modules in their current application or probably adding extra hardware for their backup and storage uh, requirement. The investigation phase main rule is that at the end of this phase you should have a firm grip on what is the most optimal solution and the most satisfying alternative from among the arrays of alternatives that uh, the user expected that you present to them eventually. The decision phase is um, where you springboard from the previous phase and this is where you actually tell the user hey from among the seven alternatives I have identified you know as option three as the most satisfying solution and option four as being the most optimal solution where should we go and if the user validates that I have enough budget we should go for option four then okay we'll go with option four and the decision phase basically is where you start as project manager defining the project charter aka terms of reference some call it the bible some call it the cookbook but the project charter is what it is it it will contain basically the project plan the, um, the staffing solutions what is the scope and the delimitations of this project what is the budget consideration what are the constraints what are the assumptions and really uh, writing the project charter takes you know a bit of time um, especially spe even for seasoned project managers um, this this project charter will eventually be presented to the project sponsor for deliberation and acceptance and once that project charter it gets accepted um, then the project gets kicked off and the project gets into full swing um, just a very quick rundown on the nine different steps that folds into these three different phases you've got under the preparation phase you've got you know understanding the end users requirement and the organization goals like I said in previous class this is basically trying to understand what and who are these users are they you know akin to change are they adaptable to different technology that might you know be part of the proposed solution understand the decision criteria and constraints like budget time how much are they willing to spend uh, in um, innovating in terms of their current process how much are they willing to 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 let go some of their staff to go into actual development and training uh, let alone their current day jobs um, how much time are they willing in terms of implementing the system like for instance if the project manager says that we can come up with a computerized system say in in six months four hundred thousand dollars are they willing to wait six months for that so those are the constraints and the decision criteria that m may have to be you know emphasized on this phase um, we knowing the constraints the scopes and the limitation uh, and understanding the behavior of the organization much more the the culture of the, the users themselves you now define what is really the problem the problem is not what it seems to be in the first place all the time um, the user can complain that they are not able to send their mails on time because of the, their ISP is always going down you know, the, the, the connection that so they they could complain that the ISP is the one that needs to be changed the provider of the internet where in fact it's actually their router has always been intermittently going down so it it's not always what it seems you really have to define what the problem really is and identify who those users that will be affected or are currently being affected by this problem and identify what are the different sources of information to get a firm grip on really what the problem is all about so if we're talking about the the problem I just mentioned about the router um, sources of information could be something like um, probably network logs, probably doing a ping, doing an IP config, doing a trace route, doing um, an actual, you know, review of the of the the router software itself. Try to identify that it's really working and it's really up to um, seven by twenty four. Once you're done with phase one, like I said, you have to have a clear understanding that uh, the users are amenable to change. The user does, or rather, do accept or embrace technology as part of the possible solution, and that there really is a problem, and that the problem is really this. In this, in my example, it could be a router. Another situation where in um, in a current enrollment system, you know accounting or finance department of a particular school may have problems you know computing how much revenue they generated semester by semester and and they take a lot of time 
two months, three months, even even one semester after before they get to find out the net revenue. And they would always complain that they don't have, you know, the accurate information on time uh, for them to actually compute the, the actual gross income and the, the net revenue. Um, 